In this video we will be making a plate of HDPE plastic that's useful in parts making. So we begin by stuffing the mold with parchment paper. This prevents the plastic from sticking to the mold and saves a lot of headaches later. For this project I'm using six pack holders and later I'll use some plastic from bucket lids. The six pack holders are made of already recycled plastic whereas the bucket lids are made of virgin plastic and there's a pretty big difference in the way that it melts, you'll see later. A lot of people would suggest to finely shred up all of your plastic pieces, but I've found that that is a very tedious waste of time. There are points where it's nice to have shredded plastic, but with the six pack holders at least, it's not necessary. All right, and I put it in the Easy Bake Oven. The target temperature is 350 degrees. After about 30 minutes, I can take it out and we can work with it a little bit and see where we're at. So you can see exactly how much more supple the virgin black plastic is versus the six pack holder plastic. I left this part in the video even though it makes me cringe because it's so gross, but uh, it's a good example of what the different types look like, even though they're all HDPE. Each time I put the glob of plastic back in the oven, I'm waiting about 30 minutes, sometimes more, maybe an hour. It's good to do plastic work while you're working on something else in the shop, otherwise it would be way too boring and way too time consuming. Now I'm using parchment paper and a welding glove to press into the glob of plastic to rem remove all air bubbles and to make room to add new pieces. This is a good point for me to cite and thank the YouTube channel where I learned a lot of this technique. That channel is called The Art of Weapons, and he has a lot of other good plastic working videos also. And after another 30 minutes, I've reached the target temperature with the new pieces I've added and I'm going to press it again. This is an iterative procedure where you'll do this over and over again until you've reached the mass of plastic that you're looking for. Once I've reached the mass amount of plastic that I want for my mold, I can take it out and start working with it. Now, if I was gonna use all one piece or one color of plastic, I could skip a lot of these steps, but I'm looking for a artsy, multicolored piece that has some marbling and some cool looks to it. So I'm removing all of this paper, and as you can see, it's a real sticky mess. I could have waited for the piece to cool down a little bit before I did this, and it would have helped a lot. But at the same time, I didn't want to let it cool too much to where it couldn't be worked with. So this is the downside of using paper, is that the paper can crumble and stick. So now again with parchment paper, I'm going to work the plastic, I'm going to fold it and twist it.
So here I continue to fold, shred paper, fold again, and smash a little bit. All I'm trying to do is get these three colors to get a good mix. Now pay attention, here comes my favorite shot of the video. As you can see, the plastic never fully liquefies. It always stays a semi-solid mass where it's just kind of squishy. Uh, before it liquefies, it would melt and catch on fire. Cutting a hot glob of plastic in half with a paint scraper is a pain in the ass. Upon reconsideration, I think that's a putty knife, not a paint scraper. Now the mass has cooled to a point where it's no longer workable, so we'll go back in the oven to get back up to our target temperature of 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Goodwill is where I've bought all of my ovens and all of my baking molds. Now I'm preparing the square shaped mold, which will be the final one that I make my plate with. If you ever feel like blowing $300, a FLIR infrared imaging gun is a really sweet buy. Now I'm just trying to work my glob of plastic into the mold to fit uniformly for the final product. This, like all the other steps, is an iterative procedure where I work it until it's cooled to a point where it cannot be worked anymore. Then I put it back in the oven for about 30 minutes, then bring it out and repeat the process. Eventually, I will have this blob of plastic spread evenly throughout the mold uh, to where I'm satisfied.
So something I realized after a couple tries was that that 10 pound weight in my pan was acting as a heat sink, drawing heat from the glob of plastic into the metal. So it was causing an uneven cooling effect and I wasn't getting an even uh, job on my mold. So what I wound up doing was putting that weight in the oven with the plastic uh, for my final cook. Okay, I am satisfied with all the cooking for the day. So I'm gonna set up my mold with the weights on it and I'm gonna let it cool overnight. Ta-da! The next day I am able to take it apart and inspect my work. Yeah. And there we have it. A piece of HDPE plate that is evenly shaped and smooth. I think I could have done a better job with uh, keeping the wrinkles out of the plastic. Yeah. And also. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.